I think we have good amount of participation right now, so should be starting. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you all for this digital session of ours, which is co-organized by the European Business and Technology Center, EBTC, and ICRISET, along with our partners, Anand and Anand. After the council in our first session we, on PPVFR, we are very pleased to co-organize the second webinar with ICRISET to bring more visibility to the legal framework of PVPs procedural aspects, and then uh, you can say more uh, visibility in regard of plant variety registrations and PVP applications. Now, I would like to ask our esteemed panelists, Dr. Surya Vinitripati from ICRISET and Dr. Neeti Wilson from Anand and Anand to briefly introduce themselves. Over to you panelists, please. Thank you, Ankita. Uh, I am Surya Vinitripati. I am a legal counsel at ICRISET. Uh, uh, we are very happy to partner with EBTC and Anand Anand. In the last event, uh, it was a very good event and we get a very good response and uh, satisfied with the response and the queries. Now we are holding a second series of the webinar and I will give details in the coming thing. Niti, you can introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I'm Niti Wilson. I'm a working at Anand and Anand. I'm a lawyer practicing intellectual property rights. And uh, my background being biotechnology and bioresources, plant varieties and biological resources are my speciality. So uh, today uh, with ICRISAT and EBTC, I'll be happily sharing the legal framework for plant variety protection in India. Thank you, Dr. Tripathi and Dr. Neeti. And now I will again give floor to Dr. Tripathi from ICRISET for his welcoming remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Angita, again. Uh, as I, I mentioned that uh, the, this is a kind of a knowledge series. We, this is not a for start or end. We will be having so many webinars on this topic. The reason behind that, we discuss a lot about patents, trademark, copyright. I have not seen, uh, and we have received a lot of requests that why we are not discussing about the plant variety, which is very, very important because we are an agrarian country. Agriculture is a very important component for uh, South Asia, especially in India. Why we are not discussing about the plant variety, which is a legal framework, which gives some rise to the users, technology developers, farmers, so we thought that uh, we should also give some uh, importance to the plant variety, which is also an important intellectual property like a patent, trademark, copyright. So those who participated in the uh, first webinar session, uh, they are fully aware that we try to highlight and connect with the government officials. There were some senior uh, officials from the Plant Variety Authority. They, they also highlighted very important issues that how the uh, plant variety authority and government is trying to bring the systems and process in order. They are going for an online filing submission or speeding up the process. There are many changes in the rules regulations also. So, but uh, we received some queries that we have discussed about the government part from the user's perspective. Like I am a scientist. If I want to understand what are the process, what are the laws, uh, how much time it will take, what are the fee process, and if I want to submit an application, what kind of documentation will be required? Can I submit my application by your own? Uh, how can I see the attorneys to do all these things? We thought, this, because this is a new area, uh, much information is not available in public domain. We thought to conduct a second series totally dedicated on the process, procedure, legal standards, formats, and many other things. So we are going to take this and here uh, we will take some queries also, very interesting queries. During the justice process, we have received many queries, but we are taking those queries which are relevant to this session only. And some queries are very, very interesting and maybe common to many others also. Uh, I think you should uh, listen carefully. And if you have any query, if you fail to submit query at the registration point, if you want to submit, start submitting in chat box. We will try to take some of the queries uh, toward the end of the program also. Thank you. Over to, again, Ankita to you. 
Thank you, Dr. Tripathi, for setting up such a nice context. So, and before we move ahead, I invite our listeners and audience to keep sharing their questions in the chat question and answer box during the session. And they can share their questions uh, in the presentation window, basically. I'll pick up those questions and ask them uh, to our speakers in the end of the session. So now let me invite Dr. Neeti Wilson to take us through the legal framework and procedures involved in the PPVFR. Dr. Neeti, over to you, please. Um, thank you, Ankita. Thank you, Dr. Tripathi. And uh, thank you to EBTC and ICRISAT for this opportunity. Um, I hope I am audible because I tried to put this on so that I'm more clearer. Uh, OK, I'll be uh, presenting. Okay, uh, my screen is visible? Yes. Okay, good. So uh, in the last knowledge session on plant variety uh, protection in India, we uh, spoke about in general, what is the legal scenario all around the world? Why do we have the plant variety act at the first place? And also, uh, you know, what is the significance of having this protection? Today, we are going to concentrate on the Indian scenario and uh, what are the framework and procedures available uh, for a person who has developed a new variety to go ahead and register it. So uh, when we talk of plant variety protection, we know that it is important to have good quality seed and that comes from high performing plant varieties. And that's why a dedicated process of investment, innovation and evaluation is needed and that's where plant variety protection fits in. The statutes for protection of plant varieties in India are uh, very well organized and in place. Uh, the Plant Variety and Farmers Rights Act, which is uh, abbreviated here as PPV and FR Act, came in 2001 with the rules coming in place in 2003 and the regulations which were actually having the forms for filing of these applications came in 2006. So the plant variety registrations in India actually started in 2007. And after that, there have been several developments and uh, further rules and regulations, which have been updated time and again, uh, improving the plant variety legislation in India, considering that it is not even a 20 year old legislation and it is based on agriculture I would say that we have come a long way already. Uh, I would also like to highlight that besides the rules and regulations, there are several public notices which are issued by the Plant Variety and uh, Farmers, uh, Farmers Rights Authority, which we call as Plant Variety Authority for short. They issue a lot of regulations uh, in terms of public notices itself. For example, last year, a public notice was issued with respect to hybrid varieties as to how the hybrids would be registered in a combined manner with their parent lines. So these notices also prepared, you know, these are also very important when we are looking into getting into uh, protection of plant variety in India. So as of now, there are several queries as to which plant variety can be registered, which cannot be registered, can everything be registered? Uh, Currently, 157 plus, I say plus because this is last year's figure. And uh, as per my, uh, I mean, what I understand is it's 158 plus five pending uh, species, which are going to be up for registration. That is the plant right authority will accept applications for registration only for these species. Now, why is that? There are varieties being registered uh, for more than thousands in, world, in uh, more than 1,000 species. In India, we are developing our own test guidelines. And as the plant varieties are living organisms and each species has to be taken individually, we have to make sure that each test guideline are specific. So uh, when in 2007, when the plant variety registrations actually started in India, it started with only 12 varieties. And today we have 150 plus varieties. 
So uh, these test guidelines are the reason why we are having step-by-step -step increase in the number of crop species in which the plant variety registrations are happening in India. Currently, there are more, thousand, more than 4,000 registered varieties under the PVP Act. Now, uh, plant variety could mean several things. And based on how you look at it from agriculture point of view, from breeder point of view, from um, seed act point of view, we're talking about you know, different types of uh, seeds there. From the plant variety registration perspective, a variety means a plant grouping, which is the lowest known rank botanical taxon. It's, a, it's something which is defined by expression of characteristics. Now, this is important because these are the characteristics whose expression is going to distinguish your variety from all the other varieties and give you protection for that distinctness if it is suitable for propagation as well as it remains unchanged by propagation. These are the criteria which are to be fulfilled for a variety to be registered under the Plant Variety Act in India. All the different types of crop species, whether they are herbal, uh, whether they are um, vegetables, different types of crop species are continuously being updated. Now, the applications which are accepted are for a new variety which you have developed. That is when you apply for registration on that day, that variety should not have been in commercial use with a grace period of one year. In case your variety has already been in the public domain and the dust guidelines were not there and the applications were not being accepted, the Plant Variety Authority gives a window period for extant varieties, which could be varieties notified under the Seeds Act, uh, varieties which are farmers varieties, which are traditionally cultivated and evolved by the farmers, and they include the wild relative or land races or the variety about which the farmer possesses common language, common knowledge and also varieties of common knowledge as we call as VCK varieties which are not notified but are in the commercial chain for more than a year and the day the dust as guideline was issued for them from that time onward these extant varieties get a window period usually for five years but it could be extended and currently, most of the extant variety uh, timeline window period for registration has been extended in view of the COVID-19 lockdown. Besides the new varieties and extant varieties, there are essentially derived varieties which can also be applied for. Uh, these are essentially uh, predominantly the varieties which has come out of a new variety or an extant variety, only differing by a, sing a single trait. I also want to highlight the farmer's variety. Now, uh, the types of variety recognize as farmer's variety. A farmer's variety could be a new variety or an extent variety. Mostly it's an extent variety. Uh, a farmer can apply for a new variety as well. So uh, these get special privileges like concession on fees, lot of relaxation on the farms and several other help and uh, have to additionally qualify to be a certified farmer's variety to be registered. These were the recently uh, expiring window of the extant variety species, uh, but these again have been extended. Now, who can register? Now, the term used is breeder, just in case of an, a copyright, it is called an author or in case of a patent, it is called an inventor. A breeder is the one who is the one who is the creator of the variety. However, the act defines the breeder who can apply for registration of a variety to be either successor of the breeder of a variety or as well as an assignee of the variety. A farmer, a group of farmers or a community of farmers can also claim to be breeders. And any person authorized by any of the above can also be uh, authorized as a breeder to apply for a variety registration. Institutions and universities or public funded agriculture institutions can also claim to be breeders and apply for it. What are the criteria that an applicant has to fulfill for its variety to be registered in India? Basically, 
it's novelty and dus d u s novelty is uh, for the new variety only and it is relaxed for its stand variety as i told you that it is already in the public domain so it cannot fulfill the novelty criteria of one year in commercial uh, commercial use distinctness uniformity and stability are the three criteria based on which a variety can be registered in india the registration process is simple if you see it from a, a birds eye view you apply to the registrar after the application the advertisement of the application happens once it's accepted then there is an issue of certification now in between there are several steps and actually instead of one advertisement there are two advertisements and uh, the word whether you say acceptance can come before or after the first advertisement and uh, the procedures keep getting complicated as we go uh, inside it but once you know it it's very easy to fulfill what are the requirements now once you have a variety developed you need to have a denomination a name which is a combination of alphanumeric characters words letters and numbers it has to be distinct for that particular species and cannot be confusing it's almost equivalent to a trademark and has rights almost equivalent to a trademark so it is very important because when you are coming for variety registration you are going to spend some money for it spend some time on it so you are going to get some commercial use that's why you're coming it is important that you choose your denomination very carefully when you apply for it as i mentioned here that besides the no uh, novelty and distinctness uniformity stability test the registration criteria is to have a valid application before the ppvfra your variety could be a new novel distinct uniform stable variety but it could not be registered if you do not have a proper application the application requires the passport data which is the uh, data of breeding of the variety and uh, the statement which brings out the novelty distinctness universe uh, uniformity and stability in the technical questionnaire or the tq along with the prescribed fees along with the application form there has to be submissions with respect to the testing of your variety to be registrable and for that you have to submit seeds of your variety you have to also submit parental material and finally you have to submit the fees for the testing as well so uh, once you have assigned a denomination to your variety your application form would have to include an affidavit which will uh, ascertain that your variety is not against public uh, uh, public in general and that includes the use of terminator technology and the statements which bring out the distinctness of your variety along with other criteria and also the declaration that you are the rightful owner of the variety is required besides the passport data uh, there are several forms which come into picture form 1 is the main form when you apply for an application for a new and extant variety two for an ebv and uh, besides form 1 usually form 1a and pv1 are also submitted pv1 is for the assigning most likely the breeder would have assigned it to a it's his own organization university or institute so that form of authorization of the assignee is also submitted and you use a legal attorney or a representative before the plant right authority to represent you then you also submit the power of attorney this is not essential a person can directly apply without any authorization of either an assignee or a legal representative these are the annexures to form 1 now uh, the reason i have listed it all together is to show that a form 1 is not just one single application and each one mentioned here has its own importance uh, whether you take it as a technical questionnaire uh, which is the uh, number i here listed i here or you take it as number m which is uh, in case of transgenic varieties the approvals and clearances for registering the variety 
each application, each variety will have to be looked into as to which form has to be used, what is required, and accordingly they have to be filed. There is opposition period of three months before a variety is registered after it goes through the testing. There are several forms related to it. When you oppose the registration, when you counter the opposition, when you request extension of time or renewal of registration. There are several other forms which continue as and when they are used. I will not get into the forms as of now. I will just uh, come straight to the fees because that has to accompany the form. Now, when you apply for application, the uh, fees for an application for a new variety is 50,000 rupees for a commercial variety, commercial organization. For an educational organization, it's 10,000 and for an individual, it is 7,000. In case of extant variety also, it's the same. However, the extant variety notified under uh, the Seeds Act, the fees for registration is only 2,000. The reason is, that in case of extant varieties notification under the Seeds Act, its extensive testing has already been done and uh, its validity has been established. So it's, uh, the registration should be much smoother. In case of EDV, the fees is again the same as new and extant variety. What is worth noticing is in case of farmers variety, there is no fees required. Farmers are exempted from paying any fee to the authority. Besides the registration fees, application registration fees, the second fees which is payable at the time of filing of the application is the dust test fee. Now, each application will have its own individual dust test. It can range anywhere, say 40,000, 50,000, 80,000, depending on which variety and how much of testing is to be required. And the authority has already set dust fees. So once you look into that uh, particular variety, then you will ascertain this much test fee is what I'm required to pay. Once the variety gets registered, the uh, payment of annual fee comes into picture. I will come back to this fees after we have reached the certificate. So once you have developed a variety, what do you do next? Well, Preparing to file for a PVP application starts two years in advance. You have to obtain the dust guidelines for those that particular species and the relevant application forms. Start conducting any dust tests that would be required to fill out the technical questionnaire. These tests may take one to two years to complete. Hence, the preparation has to start at least two years in advance. One year in advance, you verify that the crop variety is worth protecting. Because the return on the sale should justify the expense of the PVP application. Besides the high PVP application filing fee, there is also the annual fee and the renewal fee which needs to be paid. And that's why it is very critical that uh, it is justified that you actually want to go ahead with the filing of the PVP application. It should be done in consultation with the management or the financial team and then the decision should be taken. Once the decision is taken, then you start preparing the form, all the different criteria, who's the applicant, what is the variety, what is the species, what are the different criteria of the US, all of them needs to be taken into consideration. So you collate, collate all those information together. You need to remember that you have to bring in uh, all the information related to the breeding history when we're talking of parentage and the breeding methods, because we have to submit the passport data as well. Uh, the data is related to uniformity and stability, which would be based on the testing that you do on your own. The statement of distinctness is what is going to give you protection. Hence, that's the most critical one. And this has to be shown comparing it with other varieties. Now, you have to sub, uh, prepare declarations and give supporting information as to how your variety is distinct in one or more traits, either from a variety which it is most similar to or uh, from several similar other varieties or all other varieties of the species. Whichever you have available data, you need to submit this along with the supporting information and declarations related to different things. You also need to have some important dates in your mind. You need to have in case the variety has already been commercialized, the first date of sale. This becomes very critical in case of extant varieties. And also, when you have to establish the novelty of a variety that the commercialization did not take place more than one year before. 
the application date uh well the application and the filing date are listed separately because when you submit the application before the plant variety authority you actually have only the application date not the filing date the effective filing date comes into picture once all formalities are cleared and the authority issues an reg or the registration uh, number uh, for accepting your application itself not registration but application so you need to keep in to mind that what all are important you need to have your filing date prior to which date and all these things have to be kept in mind before preparing your preparing your application and then start filling in the details coming to the registration process your application is ready you go to the authority and you submit your application at the reception now what they will do is they will give you a pvp application number as i said this is your application filing when you go ahead there that acknowledgement would be received and then will be an initial examination of the application documents now within 7 days of your application they will submit to you any defect that they may have found in your application and the compliance to those defects have to be done within 15 days and once that is done they within the next 7 days the registrar shall also examine the reply and if found acceptable they will ask you to go ahead with the next step which is submission of dust testing fees you again get 15 days to submit the dust test fee if the dust test fee which is also to be accompanied with the seeds is not received within 15 days the application is received and your application filing date becomes null and void you have to start the procedure again go to the reception start with filing the application now uh, the fees can be paid online currently the application fee application cannot be made online uh, but the plant right authority is working towards it and in our last session uh, dr nagaratna was here from the plant right authority she confirmed that very soon the plant right authority will start accepting applications online as well once you submit the test test fee and the seeds all the formalities with respect to the application filing is complete that's when you get the registration or the reg number as we call it once the reg number is established the first publication of your application happens this publication says that where your applic what are the details of your application and where the dust test is going to take place so that if anybody wants to go and inspect the variety which is being tested they can do so upon payment of fees so this green arrow which i'm showing is related to the publication after this step so how does the dust testing conducted the dust testing is conducted for new varieties it is conducted for two crop seasons at two different locations in cases of farmers varieties and vcks one crop season at two different locations in case of extant varieties uh, no dust testing is conducted because it is processed by the evrc committee which recommends for registration in case of edvs dust testing is not mandatory but field test is conducted to ascertain the dust test criteria as i mentioned earlier the crop wise guidelines for e species like grapes mangoes which are currently in pipeline i'm going to show that and uh, have to be done and the dust test centers where these uh, dust testings would happen are already notified by the authority there is possibility of online on site dust testing as well besides the inspection per variety now there is a fee of rupees 5000 for a visit to a dust testing center for 3 hours for inspection of your variety or any other variety which has been published in the plant variety journal the dust test is done with reference to the reference varieties which are maintained by the dust test centers so when you are uh, say applying for a watermelon variety you are going to uh, tell that this is my distinct characteristic and the dust test center will test it against its reference varieties available already with them and then come up with the results now there are constraints when this dust testings are done because there could be variable expressions of some characteristics 
during different seasons of the same variety. And the dust test centers also understand it. And accordingly, they make sure that the uh, tests are done in a way that it is done in a uniform manner and the results are also uh, accordingly concluded. Once the dust test is done, you know, the dust testing has been completed, then the data analysis happens. Now, most, of the, most importantly, the dust tests are done in a confidential manner. So uh, the person who's doing the dust test would not know which uh, variety is growing where. So there is no chances of any uh, mismatch or uh, you know, no questions to be asked about the dust tests. So once the data analysis happens, then the registrar, uh, you know, with the help of uh, the investigator, goes ahead and asks, uh, takes a decision whether the candidate variety is to be registered or not to be registered. In case there are any issues as to what you had said are your characteristics and what the dust testing, testing center has found, they will issue a scrutiny report and they will ask you to revert back, well, again, within 15 days, and uh, which, in which you can either tell as to why the variation happened or you can rectify your application and say that, okay, this particular characteristic, I will consider what the authority has, uh, the dust test center has found out to be, and I will revise my application and accordingly, the application would be proceeding. Once all that has been done, then uh, the, uh, uh, the registry will again publish it before issuing the certification. Now, this publication at this stage is the acceptance of application publication inviting pre-grant opposition. And the three-month time period, which is... Uh, which is the wait period after this publication at the Plant Variety Journal is when any third party can go ahead and file an opposition against the registration of your application. If that starts, if the opposition starts, then the procedures related to opposition continue, wherein the opposition uh, statement comes in, the counter statement goes in, there's a hearing uh, as appointed, and based on then a decision is taken on the opposition. After that is over, then the decision of the grant or the refusal or the rejection of the application happens. If it's grant, then a registration certificate is issued to the applicant. Once the certificate is issued, the validity of the certificate is six years for all crops, which could be renewed for further nine years. Then uh, in case of trees and vines, the initial certificate is for nine years, which can be renewed for another nine years. So the total term period is 15 years for the crops and 18 years for the trees and vines. Now, it needs to be highlighted here that in case of trees and vines and the non-notified extent varieties, all the registration period is from the date of registration. The notified varieties get their registration term starting from the date of notification. So suppose you came to the authority 10 years after the notification of your extent variety, the authority took two years to get the registration. So 12 years have already passed. So your in total term, which would be for your registration would only be three years in total, making it 15 years. This needs to be kept in mind to know that whether to apply for the registration or not to apply and make sure to apply it on time. Okay. Uh, I just want to go back to the fees. Once your application is registered, an annual fee is payable. In case of plant varieties, the annual fee is only 20, 10 rupees. In case of extent variety, which are notified, it's 2000 rupees per year. In case of extent varieties, which are non notified, case, uh, the annual fee is 2000 plus 0.1% of the sale value of the seeds during the previous year, besides sale, 0.5% of the royalty. In case of new varieties, this figure is doubled. In case of sale, it is 0.2%, and in case of royalties received, it is 1% of the previous year, which is payable as annual fee, besides the 2000 fee, uh, which needs to be paid to the authority. The initial term of six years and nine years went over 
there could be a renewal made and the renewal fee has been listed as for individuals as 10,000, for educational institutions as 20,000, for commercial organizations as one lakh and for farmers, no fees. After the renewal, the, the annual fee still continues to be payable. I'm sorry, I should have put this slide here. Okay, so coming to the last year uh, uh, figures, we see, or let me just skip last year, let me just go straight to the statistics. So if we see that the Plant Variety Authority has uh, been regularly receiving applications since 2007 when it started uh, the application. The highest number uh, received was in 2016-17 when the figures crossed 3,569. Last year it was 592 applications. And uh, regularly the Plant Variety Authority uh, has been receiving uh, the applications for different types of crops also. Now as you can see the number of crops also increased in 2016-17. This is also for the fact that the dust test guidelines are becoming available for more and more plants. The number of certificates which have been issued year-wise for different types of varieties. In case of PDVs, as you can see, there has been only one application which was uh, with one certificate which was issued in 2012-13. But in case of notified extent varieties, 1065 applications have been granted till now. In case of extant VCK varieties, 427. In case of farmers varieties, 1,597. And in case of new varieties, 533 new varieties have been registered. Now, these look like very big figures, but when you actually look to it, you see that most of the applications have been filed by ICAR and uh, the private players are very few in numbers. For uh, with respect to the number of various varieties. Okay, I can see Ankita swiping that I'm exceeding my time. Okay, I just want to briefly touch into uh, two or three, uh, you know, two or three uh, different types of uh, different cases which have happened. And uh, this is one issue related to the provisional protection. Usually, any plant variety or any other intellectual property right receives protection for its IP rights after the grant or after the certification. In case of plant varieties, there is a provisional protection from the date of filing till the, till the date of the certificate is registered. That is during the pendency of the application under Section 24.5 of the Plant Variety Act. There has been a court case into it. And the Delhi High Court had declared that this is not a valid provision. However, the Supreme Court has stayed this order and currently this provisional protection is available to the plant variety applicants during the pendency of the application itself. Coming to another case where uh, the question was raised whether the parental lines would be uh, considered as novel or new variety uh, if the seeds have already been, the hybrids, the hybrids coming out of those parental lines, the seeds of those, those hybrids seizurized. And the ruling was that in that case, parental lines would not be treated as novel if the hybrid falls under the extent, uh, extent uh, category. Sorry. And uh, wanted to also highlight the case in which the question came up for, with regard to dust test. Now, dust test is, uh, it takes time and uh, it's not very reliable as we all know that there could be complications and constraints are there. So in case of contentious proceedings, the act does provide for special tests such as DNA testing or other laboratory testing. And the court have held that at least in case of such contentious proceedings, special tests should be allowed even if dust test is present. Because during registration, the special test would be allowed only if the dust test fails. But in case of contentious proceedings, special tests need to be considered. Uh, I'll just end by saying that quality seed is India's lifeline. The plant variety innovations, protections, and recognition is essential for farmers and uh, the future of our country. So uh, let's make sure that uh, we are able to not just uh, 
protect our plant varieties, but we also recognize the breeders, which are mainly farmers in our country. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neeti, for such a nice, comprehensive and very informative presentation. And I'm sure that our audiences are also enjoying a lot because I can see a lot of questions, even in the chat box and question and answer box, I must say. So uh, let's move to our panel discussion. So I would like to pass the floor, Dr. Tripathi and Dr. Neeti to you. Over to you guys, please. Thank you, Dr. Niti. I think you have given a very wonderful presentation. You have covered a lot of queries, like uh, for a common man from a builder or farmer or a scientist perspective. You have tried to cover a lot of queries, but I understand the topic is so big. And because this is a legal issue linked with some technical issue, technology and uh, plant science, breeding, many other aspects, it is very difficult to cover everything into an hour or half an hour. That's why we are running the list series. In coming days, we will add more information about the PVP. Uh, but during the registration process, we received so many queries. And uh, even in chat box also, we are receiving queries. So first, uh, I will take up the queries uh, received at the registration point. And after that, Ankita may take up queries we are receiving now, like queries. So as you mentioned that India is developing its own process, procedure, guidelines. That's why the number of species are limited, though we are increasing. Uh, but number of species notified for a registration are limited. So the query is there. Uh, already there is a system of UPOP system, international system. Uh, why we have not adopted that? Why we have created our own system? Right. Well, this is a very valid query because uh, UPOV system has been there uh, since 1960s. And uh, India did try to join the UPOV system uh, with its amendment in 1978. And, uh, uh, but then we did not ratify it for the fact that uh, India wanted to make sure that the farmer's rights are established in India and there is no way that the farmers would feel threatened because of the plant variety protections in India. And UPAV next amendment 91 did not allow for farmers rights. And that's why did, we did not go ahead with it. Our soy general system of plant variety registrations came into picture after trips in 1995, because we were required to have plant variety registrations. So the legislation has been crafted very uh, judiciously uh, so as to comply with TRIPS, allow for plant variety innovations to be recognized, and at the same time, preserve the farmers' rights, provide them with the required recognition as well as incentives and the security that uh, the farmers in India. We know uh, that Indian farmers are small farmers mainly, and that's why. India is not following the UPOV system and following this sui generis, or which, which is, in other words, its own new legislation system. Thank you. I think that, that is the reason that India is known to be unique in the plant variety protection. And many other developing and underdeveloped countries, they are trying to take a guidance from the Indian legislation and to enact in their own countries. Uh, next query is that, uh, is there any difference or similarity between geographical indication and the plant variety? And even uh, there are a lot of confusion that registration of the variety under the Seeds Act or any other act and registration of the variety under the plant variety. So uh, how to make a distinction and uh, being an innovator, uh, should I go for many other uh, law registration or one be sufficient? Okay, I'll take that one by one. Uh... Firstly, there is no overlap between geographical indications and plant variety. Geographical indications are basically on the name or uh, the place from where particular varieties may be originating. It has nothing to do with the characteristics of the variety developed as new or distinct by a particular breeder. So, uh, a ge geographical indication for example, like the basmati rice the word basmati can be used for any of the um, varieties, rice varieties, which are growing in the geographical region of the, of the Indo-Gangetic Plains, which has been characterized to have the 
basmati characteristics but if an individual or a breeder or an institute develops a rice variety which is basmati with a special distinct trait and they are able to fulfill the criteria of this dus they can still have a registration under the plant variety act that's uh, the difference between gi and plant variety now uh, coming to your next point as to the other registrations which are happening well actually the word registration is what is creating confusion and it's very you know rightfully questioned because it is actually creating lot of confusion under the seeds bill all the statutes that i listed they were all related to the plant variety legislation but the agriculture industry or the seed industry is not limited to only that you have to get into the seed bill uh, which is currently pending or the seed act uh, you also have to get into the legislation related to import and export and the quarantines because suppose a foreign variety has to be registered in india it has to be reported here because the uh, propagation material has to be submitted uh you have to get into the essential commodities act because some of the agricultural products are mentioned as essential commodities so uh, there are so many interrelated uh, legislations and the registration under the seed act is basically the certification of its quality that is going to offer and that also has a very rigorous process before any registered or certified seed hits the market so the registration whether it is a uh, foundation seed or the breeder seed nucleus seed uh, whichever certified seed we are talking about under the seed act is completely distinct from the registered plant variety under the plant variety act this is one suggestion that uh, the plant variety authority needs to keep into consideration they have recently come out how you are required to label a registered variety but if they can come up with a color code just like the seed act has you know if for foundation seed you have white tags then you have purple and yellow tags for different types of seeds if you can have a particular color tag for plant variety uh, registered seeds also i think this confusion can be solved but as of now we have to be careful when we read the label whether it is talking about the plant variety registration or any other registration thank you very much i think this was a very relevant query and uh, you have very nicely answered the query so we have to take care of that for what purpose we are going for registration so plant variety registration is for ipr purpose seed and other things for any other purpose that is not for ip protection now i have a because you have discussed about trade i have a two three queries i am clubbing into one and you can answer that how to protect or register a variety plant variety having disease resistant trait and what are the provision for horticultural crops and what are the provision for medicinal plants okay uh, well uh, taking the horticulture and medis crops as uh, they will go as regular crops when we think of uh, plant variety registrations in terms of checking whether those particular species are notified for uh, acceptance that is their dust guidelines are established or not if yes then you go ahead with them whether it's a new variety extant variety vck you uh, know it goes accordingly uh coming to the first one that is the uh disease resistant now this disease resistant trait i believe uh, could again be an extant or a new variety however the question comes that how would it be tested i think that is the main fear behind this question and the testing for uh, the disease resistant trait would be in the same way how you have established how the variety is being uh, developed now in case it is difficult to do such tests because it will require an isolated atmosphere and the dust testing centers may not have those facilities that case you can also check if you are able to use some special test to take out your characteristic suppose a disease resistant trait has been incorporated by molecular biology techniques and a pcr or uh, dna fingerprinting test which could show that particular gene or a particular uh, protein being produced uh, you can definitely use it and present it before the authority where uh, they can ask you to pay additional fee for a special test but then in that case your variety registration will also be expedited because the Getting a much faster as compared to the dust testing. 
linked to the same query because we have mentioned about something uh, how to do testing and other things or capability and the facility government for uh, testing uh, what are the special provision for gmos or varieties uh, which are developed through biotechnological tools genomics and things is there any special provision or they will go in the regular way um, except for one it's it's completely a regular way the first thing is that you need to have an approval from geac that you can register the variety uh, rest of all rest everything is the same because you can make all submissions based on the same application form it's the same application form one same and egg shares everything goes accordingly and the dust test holders will take necessary precautions as recommended by the geac for registration of genetically modified or biotechnologically developed varieties next query is also linked with that you because you are saying that maximum time or resources whatever constraint is the with the dust testing so is it possible that suppose i am an innovator i can do my dust testing by own create a data and submit a data with my application that will ease my application speed up my application process yeah see uh, dust testing on your own is anyways required to be done by you because you have to submit that information in your application form technical questionnaire uh the on site dust testing facility uh, is possible if requested before the authority especially in case of tree gmos because by the time your characteristic will show it could be many years so uh, yes it is possible but it it will be taken up on a case to case basis okay uh, i will take few more queries then ankita will take care uh, being an innovator somebody has developed gms in two different crops uh, how can we protect the these crops when you say gms you mean genetically modified species i received the question gms i think it will be genetically modified if there is any no okay. other meaning or okay i'll take it that way well if you have developed new traits uh, by using genetically modified uh, making genetically modified varieties in that case uh, you can go ahead with protection of your variety before the authority however your traits your uh, new uh, innovations related to biotechnological methods they all will be protected under the patent act so uh, the plant variety act is very specific only for the variety itself and that too for the specific variety for the specific trait the whole plant the particular uh, gene sequence the particular cassette the combination used the tools used the method used to prepare such genetically modified plants they all be under the purview of the patent act thank you and another query it's very interesting query uh, being a innovator how many varieties i can go for registration or being a from institute is any restriction on the numbers i don't believe so so as much as possible i can innovate and go for application submission you i mean an innovation has to be continuous how many would you like to protect what i would say that you consider the commercialization aspect yeah. this is something which i always say even for all the other innovators whether they're going for patent registrations or design registrations please assess the commercials uh, commercials before you go ahead with the protection you can take a call between publication defensive uh, protection or actual protection based on what is your final target or goal last question from my side uh, can the pvp registration be challenged or revoked if yes how when what condition we can challenge or the registration can be revoked yeah as i mentioned that uh, during the registration process itself after the first publication the pre grant challenge is possible where uh, you can take the ground that it was uh, it is not being registered according to the criteria of the act and also the ground that it has been illegally acquired and uh, after the registration also there is possibility to apply for revocation of a registered uh, variety the first uh, procedure takes before the registrar and the second procedure takes before the chairperson 
so i am stopping here with the note that there is a difference between the challenging the uh, registration or uh, submitting application for the revocation and the infringement application because infringement will go to the civil court or the other legal procedure challenging and revocation is a different procedure am i right uh, the challenge to the variety registration can be taken up in infringement proceeding as well but uh, we are not talking about that today so that's why i'm not making my comments on uh, the proceedings outside the uh, plant variety authority the revocation process after the registration till the whole term of the 15 year or the 18 year term period can be made before the plant variety authority as well yeah definitely we will have a next session on the infringement and the commercial utilization now over to ankita thank you dr and dr neeti for your contribution to this discussion and would like to take a few questions from our participants um they are saying that uh, one question is uh, that this person is getting lines from nbpgr and they are screening it for pest or disease resistant and if they find the resistant lines can they further uh, progress and release a variety i'm very I'm sorry. technical question yeah i'm sorry can you repeat that please i was just i just went to the question answer session okay 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 so right. this one is that that this person is getting lines from nbpgr and they are screening it for pest or disease resistant and if they find the resistant lines can they further progress and releases as variety yes yes you can the only thing what you need to do is you need to check with nbpgr what kind of rights are there in varieties or the lines they are providing you if the nbpgr is providing you under certain agreements in which those lines are already protected then there could be uh, you know certain procedures that you will need to follow before you can go ahead and protect but yes even when you go ahead by making your own varieties using public material you can go ahead for protection Uh, at this stage, I'd also like to comment. I just opened Q and A session, and uh, people have mentioned that that GMS could also mean genetic male sterility. So, uh, taking that, uh, if uh, been used prepared by in um, the child gentility, yes, that can also be protected. And uh, in case there's a hybrid in which uh, one of the uh, varieties, one of the parental lines are male sterile lines. and uh, then a compound registration can also happen where the male sterile line maintainer line and the restorer line can all together be taken up and compound registrations can happen okay okay thank you ma'am and then uh, how many years required to complete the procedure and get pvp registration certificate well earlier it used to take a little longer but uh, now things have uh, started becoming more faster so you can expect the registration within 2 years you know especially for those extent notified varieties uh, where you don't actually have to go for the dust test definitely within 2 years but uh, the dust testing needs to be done thoroughly and uh, if the seasons and the dust test centers are able to conduct and complete their work in 3 uh, to 4 years maximum okay okay and then uh, next question is how the registration of varieties under draft seed bill 2019 is different from that of ppf and r act of 2001 i have already answered that question so i'll just skip that because we just discussed it in the question with dr tripathi rays yeah and it seems that lot of questions you have already answered during your presentation already right and yeah i try to i try to yeah so uh, i think we are fine with the questions now and there is a suggestion that next session should be on biodiversity act a lot of people are saying that it seems that <laughs> yeah yeah that that is that is our agenda so biodiversity act is also very very important both from the pvp angle from the patent angle and the other compliances so we will go into yeah. phase that's why we are saying that this is a series uh, one by one we will go now biodiversity law is uh, my passion so uh, i'm actually looking forward to sessions on biodiversity law absolutely absolutely so uh, it seems that we are fine and good and uh, we'll take up all these questions as a form of question and answer sessions right and in the next uh, session might be right and uh, this has been a really a wonderful session i must say and i would like to thank you 
for both of our wonderful panelists as well, Dr. Tripathi and Dr. Neeti. And thank you for our listeners as well. Stay tuned us with us for thank you very much. Have a nice, great day ahead. Thank, thank you so much.